All right, well, we are uh, going to continue our series this morning in, uh, in our growth series, right? Growth 2020. Last week and in the previous weeks, we've been looking at many Bible characters. We're looking at Bible characters. We're seeing what we can learn from them, right? If uh, We want to learn from the people who are doing it. And uh, as I study this, I, I tell you, there is just so much so much amazing truth here. And this, this particular character in the Old Testament is someone I admire. I, uh, many, many, many years ago I preached a message similar to this, but not this message. But this is a message that really spoke to me as I began to study. And it's, uh, it's a little-known person. It's a judge. So if you want to open your Bible to the book of Judges, we can look at Judges chapter 3. If you're feeling this morning that maybe this is not the year of growth and that you are up against kind of a, a tremendous headwind, I don't know how many of you feel that. Um, we've all struggled with headwinds. I know uh, for us who have driven for years, I know Donna and Andy, they, they drive for a living. I know uh, John Milo drives and Many of you just have, have just driven a tremendous amount of miles, and you know sometimes you get better gas mileage when you're going with the wind. You know what I mean? And when you when you're up against that headwind, if you're traveling west and the wind is out of the west, uh, it can be very, very, very challenging. It seems like everything is against you, you know. And uh, it, it's, when you're driving a semi, it's even worse than that. If it comes from a different direction, it can blow you across road into other lanes and things of that nature, but. Uh, we're in a fight this year, aren't we? We're kind of in a fight. We're trying to grow in 2020, and we're up against this, this headwind. We're struggling. And if you feel like maybe you're struggling and you don't know if you'll be able to grow this year the way you, the way you want to, then I think that this message is good for you. It's good for me because I learned from a Bible character what we can do when we have a headwind. There's a lot of people who maybe can't do much, right? Uh, you hear this from time to time, and, and you hear it from maybe the elderly folks. They say, well, I can't do much. And, but we can pray, can't we? We need the older generation to pray for the younger generation. We need their wisdom. You know, we're not... The, the, young, the young population shouldn't be renegade Christians. We should lean into the direction of the older generation. We need their wisdom. We need their wisdom. Wisdom is applied knowledge. They have knowledge. They've applied it for met through many years. And we can lean into their wisdom, can't we? When we get to this judge, Shamgar, it doesn't appear like he's much of a, much of a man. There's really nothing mentioned of his ancestry other than that he was the son of Anath. Well, who is that, you know? I mean, one little blip of his ancestry. Now, sometimes we live in the shadow of our parents. Sometimes the parents kind of live in the shadow of their children if their children do better than them. But, I mean, we, we, we like to name drop, don't we? <laughs> we like to name drop. It gives us credibility. I don't know how many of you have gone into situations and you mention a name and you start to name drop. And we do that from time to time. You can't do that with Shamgar. He's the son of Anath. Nothing really that important here. It doesn't mention any of his descendants either doesn't mean he didn't have children. It just means that for some reason the Lord decided to leave out children. And maybe he had some, maybe he didn't, I don't know. There's nothing mentioned about his past or his future. It doesn't say anything about the things that Shamgar would go on to do outside of what's mentioned here in verse 31 of Judges 3. It doesn't say anything about his past, that he was just this incredible, incredible military conqueror other than what we find in verse 31 of Judges 3. It doesn't mention his education. It didn't say whether he had a PhD or a THD or a ABCDEFG. You know, we, we, we like to think that, well, if, I'm, if I graduated from an Ivy League college, I'm really somebody. It doesn't mention his education. It doesn't mention outside of being the son of Anne doesn't mention his family, past or future. And I think God does this for a reason. 
I, I think that God intentionally did this. If you're in Judges 3, keep your finger there. You can turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And let's look at verse 26 just real quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. Very powerful passage here. It says, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Verse 29, this is why, ready for this? That no flesh should glory in his presence. There's not going to be many Davids. There's not, there are not going to be many, many Samsons, in a sense. There's not going to be many D.L. Moody's and Charles Spurgeon's of the world. You see, oftentimes, great men have great big egos. So God's going to choose those that are not mighty. Those that maybe are not wise. And He's going to bring them up from where they're at, and God is going to get the glory. In Judges chapter 3, verse 31, we see this glimpse of Shamgar. And after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goad. And he also delivered Israel. There's one of the reference, turn over a couple chapters to Judges chapter 5 and verse 6. This is the only other reference. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, there he is again mentioned, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways. Let's look at two things we can learn from Shamgar this morning. First of all, he was responsible. He was responsible. Now, it doesn't say that he worked hard. It doesn't, it doesn't say, and Shamgar worked hard in those days. But I think it's safe to infer that. You know, working hard is a commandment of God. It's not an option, it's an obligation. Work, as one person said, is our, is our ethical and moral duty. Work hard. And I tell you, we are in a society that people just aren't working hard anymore. I mean, there is a loss of incentive to actually work hard. And I'm not going to get real political here. But can I say this this morning? That there are some people out there that really do need help. They need the unemployment benefits. They really actually need them. They need them. And then I think there are some people who don't need them. I think that there are some people out there who are taking advantage of the system. And I think that when you give somebody a reason not to work, it's easy not to work. I think it's easy to become lazy, to accept handouts. Now, I'm telling you, friends, there are people out there that need it, and we need to pray for those people because there are some unemployed people that really need help. But I think the people who don't need the help are taking advantage of the system and keeping the benefits from flowing to the people who actually do need it. I heard recently there was this, uh, I don't know, senator or something that talked about a a, a go back to work bonus. <laughs> and I just I, I was just shocked at that. Like that would even be even the bonus for me working is called a paycheck, you know? <laughs> and and the bonus for me working should be like you don't get evicted. But we have really killed the incentive. You see, people don't want to work anymore. Not when things are handed to them. But you see, work is our is our is our obligation. It's our obligation, it's our moral duty, Colossians 3.23, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Work hard, do it heartily. 
you got to work. You see, Shamgar was responsible, and I think he worked really hard. We should work hard for our bosses, for our families. We should work hard for the Savior, as to the Lord, as unto the Lord. When you go out there and you work, you put forth a hundred percent. Don't slack. Proverbs talks about the person with a slack hand. Don't be lazy. You know, 600 Philistines is a lot of Philistines. A 600 of anything is a lot, right? And so here Shamgar is, and he goes out there and he, it says he slew 600 Philistines. I'm sure he felt overwhelmed. I mean, I don't know how you're up against 600 Philistines and not feel overwhelmed. I, I think that when we decide that we want to grow this year in 2020, we go, this, the odds are against us. The odds are so not in our favor right now. The economy is tipping. Everything about it is just is, is, is very, very difficult. The odds aren't in our favor, and I don't think the odds were in his favor. One against 600? How many of you think that he should have prevailed? I sure don't. Not with the odds like 600. And so here we are. We work hard. And growth is hard work, isn't it? Growth is hard work. Especially in a, in a COVID environment. Every one of us has to bear our own burdens. That's what it says in Galatians. Now Joseph didn't have it easy. We talked about Joseph. He was uh, obviously sold into slavery. He was imprisoned. Uh, not rightfully. He was forgotten about in prison. I don't think Joseph had it easy. I don't think Abraham had it easy. I don't think Moses had it easy. Certainly, our Savior didn't have it easy. I mean, He hung on the cross, died for our sins, but you know what? Growth is hard work. Growth is hard work, and the most important work is often the most difficult work. Raising children is not easy. I shouldn't say that. Raising good children is not easy. Being a good spouse is not easy. Being a good employee, being a good Christian is not easy. I'm telling you, the most important work is the most difficult. Let me give you a couple quick sub-points, though, under the fact that he was responsible. First of all, he was faithful in his focus. He was faithful in his focus. It didn't say whether he got distracted, but I can't assume that he did. I think that he was, I think he was razor-focused. I think that's what led to his success, was that he was razor-focused. He was, he was disciplined. And he was focused on the right issue. When you are up against, when, when you are up against 600 Philistines, friends, you don't have the time to get distracted. Or you're dead. I guess you're dead meat. Because <laughs> that's what would happen. 600 Philistines is a lot of people. One Philistine. Don't think, that, don't think that they didn't come prepared to the battle either. I guarantee you the Philistines had, had weapons. They learned to make them from the Hittites. They had weapons. They showed up and they were ready to rumble. And you know what? He was faithful in his focus. He was very disciplined. Number two, he was frequent in his fight. He was frequent in his fight. How do you eat an elephant, friends? One bite at a time. How do you kill 600 Philistines, baby? One Philistine at a time. That's how you do it. you got to be frequent in your fight. You cannot lose your focus. You have to be faithfully focused, and you have to be frequent in your fight. Listen, I don't know how many times we actually are just about to win, and then we give up. You know, it's interesting that... The, Paul's charge to Timothy, preach the Word. Be instant in season, out of season. Right? Preach it all the time. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering. Just keep on doing it. you got to just stay focused. Growth is like that. 
you got to stay focused. You've got to be faithful to your focus. You have to be frequent in your fight. And can I tell you this? This morning, my dear friends, you're going to get some blisters when you're out there working. It's not going to be easy. Killing 600 Philistines was just like, wow, just, they just, I just walk on the scene and they just they drop over. You know, there I am. And poof, poof. It's not like that. 600 Philistines, that takes a lot of fighting, doesn't it? It takes consistency. One after another, after another, after another, after another. Friends, you're going to get some blisters. You're going to have some aches and pains from working hard. And I'll tell you this, you're going to have to miss a lunch from time to time. Yeah, you're going to have to miss a dinner date. You're going to have to miss maybe a vacation to grow this year. Working hard is not for the weary. You got to keep working and you got to stay diligent and you got to work and you got to work. 1 Corinthians 9 says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. Only one's going to get the prize. Now, in this, in this environment, everybody gets a trophy. But we know that we know that there's only one winner, even though everybody gets a trophy. You get the participation award. You show up, you get a ribbon. <laughs> I don't want the ribbon. I want that big old nasty trophy. You know how many of those that I have on my mantle? None. I don't have a mantle. But if I had a mantle, you know what? I can buy trophies. Your kids, they, they, they get these trophies and they're really excited about them. I, you know, I can go to this trophy place in, in Bettendorf. I could buy a trophy for anything. The best looking husband award. Get this big, about 100 bucks. I mean, it would be real. I mean, I mean it's true. I could have the best children award. You know, I might do that, actually. When I'm independently wealthy, I'm going to go to the, to the trophy place, and I'm going to litter an entire mantle full of trophies. And people are going to come in there and be like, did you earn all these? And I'll say, yeah. And they're going to go up and they're going to read them. And they're going to be like, the best father award? What is that? You know? Yeah, best looking husband award? What is that? Let me tell you what, friends, it's going to take some work, though, isn't it? Only one receives the prize. It says in verse 24, So run that ye may obtain. So work hard because you want to win. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. I, I'm not running to get second place. In, in Shamgar's world, second place, he's dead. I guarantee you, listen, it doesn't say that he quote unquote worked hard. I guarantee he worked hard. You don't kill 600 Philistines. You, you, you know, it's not like just, I don't think it was one at a time. I think it was like an ambush, you know? It doesn't say that. I mean, let's, let's face it, we've seen enough war movies. It's 600 on one, right? It's not like, all right, I'll take the next one. Ding! And then they get in a ring and he prevails. And then he, he, you know, he's down. They drag him off and he gets a sip of water and it's like a boxing match and you know, they put some Vaseline all over his face and, and he stretches and he stretches. And, okay, the next one, ding! No, he had to be serious about this. If he didn't prevail, he's dead. We have to be consistent. I think he was responsible. He was, he was faithful in his focus. He was frequent in his fight. Number two, number two, he was not just responsible, but he was resourceful. I think if you want to win this year, you got to be resourceful. Now listen, Shamgar was, was probably just a farmer, at least it appears this way in Scripture. He had an ox goad. I don't know many of you. Who, how many of you have an ox goad? You know? I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of Occupation probably back then, but he had an ox goat. You have to use the weapons you have in your arsenal. Use the weapons that God has given you. You've got to be resourceful. Don't wait to fight until you get some new stuff. You can't wait to grow until, well, the, the economy has to change. Or, or boy, my, you know, my, 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 uh, my situation has to just get better. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what happens with Christians. They'd say, well, if things were 
different. How many of you have said when if things were different? If things were just different. He didn't complain about it either. Not only did he use what he had, but he, 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 he didn't complain about it. There was a, a new arrival in heaven. He was surprised to see a suggestion box along Main Street. He turned to a more seasoned resident and asked, if everyone is supposed to be happy in heaven, why is there a suggestion box? The experienced tenant replied, because some people aren't really happy unless they can complain. And I feel that sometimes we just want to have something to say to justify the reason why we didn't get done what we should have gotten done, right? And Philippians 2.14 says to do all things without murmuring and, and disputing. We should do all things without murmuring and disputing. Don't offer an excuse. And there are a million excuses why we don't grow this year. Right? A million reasons why we don't grow this year. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm too little experience. Too much experience. There's no time. There's no money. There's no help. It's too late. It's too early. There's no room. I have kids. I have a spouse. Don't know how. It's not easy. It's too hard. It's too far. I'm broke. I'm not smart enough. I'm not strong enough. And you can, the list goes on and on and on and on. And we can say all reasons why we justify the reason why we're not growing. No, we're in a pandemic. We can put that in here. The, the, the government is not doing maybe what it should or doing more or less than what it should. Or, or, or I mean, just come up with just a, a million of them. I don't see Shamgar complaining. I see him out there. He's killing. He's getting it done. And because he used the tool that God gave him, God got the glory. Don't wait for better equipment. Don't wait for a better situation. Because you have to be faithful in the situation you're in. Things were different. If we had a bigger church, if we had faster internet, if we had more people, if we had less people, if there wasn't a pandemic, if we had a vaccine, if we didn't have a vaccine, if we had more money, if we had less money, if we'd sell our property, if we didn't sell our property, if we had a new building, if we didn't have a new building. God wants you to be faithful right where you are with exactly what you have. God blesses faithfulness. You see, friends, if we can do it on our own, then what do we need God for? I think God wants us in that certain situation where we depend on Him. And if we cannot depend on God, with an ox goad. You think we're going to depend on God if you have an Uzi? I'm, quite frankly, I think you would have done a better job with an Uzi. Just brrrr, done! What's next, Lord? He says, you get out there with that ox goad and you whip him. If you want to grow this year, you've got to t- use the tools that are in front of you. Now, this, of course, doesn't mean you don't look for other tools to do the job, right? I mean, David, he used a stone. Samson used the jawbone. I mean, that's pretty even more peculiar than an ox go. I mean, can you imagine just kind of rumbling around, grabs this jawbone, this will do! Ha <laughs> ha! And he gets crazy and just starts whacking people. I mean, I think an ox go, that's, that's pretty wild, you know? I mean, I don't know, was he out there, you know, goading his ox? You know? Come on. Philistine, whack! I mean, to me, I just can't even begin to imagine what came upon him. I mean, was he sitting there and he's just like, Lord, really, this is all I get, right? I mean, I, I, it's not, an Uzi would, would do this. And God whispered down, and he says, they're illegal. Full autos are illegal. He uses what he has in his hand to do exactly what God wanted him to do. Make no mistake, look for an, I mean, use your, use your brain, but let me tell you, friends. Use what you have in front of you. Let me just conclude by saying this. When it comes to spiritual things, right? Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold. Lay hold on eternal life. We know that. 
We have to work hard with spiritual things, but we have to work hard with physical things. Good things don't come to those who are lazy. They come to those who work hard. One guy said that success is paid for in advance by hard work. Work hard. The people who are successful, they always look at them and say they were lucky. They didn't, they were lucky. They worked hard. You, 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 think, you think Jeff Bezos got lucky? I think he worked hard. He leveraged. He sweated. He, he, he risked a lot. But three things that we can remember. First of all, start where you are. First of all, start where you are. That means like right now. Just do right now. You, you, don't reposition yourself. Start exactly where you are, number one. Start there. Number two, use what you have. Use what you have. God didn't forget about you. He didn't forget about Ben and Lydia. He didn't forget about Rebecca. He didn't forget about Norm. He didn't forget about, uh, about Brooks. He, he, he didn't forget about, about Samuel. Maybe he forgot about Samuel. He didn't forget about Sam. He didn't forget about Bill or Joel or Dana or me. Start right where you are and use exactly what it is you have. Stop making excuses why you're not growing. Stop making excuses. And number three, do what you can do. Right? Do exactly what you can do. We can't do it all, but we can do something, right? But we got to work hard. People, people say, people say uh, this is it's a really cute cliche. You've heard this one. They... Um, they say work, work, uh, work smarter and not harder. That's that's stupid. That's it's cute, but it's 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 stupid. People say work, work smarter, not harder. No, no. Let me tell you this: you need to work smarter and harder. You don't do one at the exclusion of the other. Work smarter and work harder. It, it, it needs. This is a project that needs brains, not bronze. Right? That's that's. You know what? If you want to be successful this year, it's going to take your back and your brains. You're going to have to be all in. You don't go out there to kill 600 Philistines and think, well, if I could just work smarter and not harder. You know what he did? He picked up his ox goat and he started whipping them Philistines. There are very few, but there are some things that I want God to replay for me when I get to heaven. I want him to replay this scene. And we're going to have all eternity to tap into God's knowledge. And I want to say, Lord, I just want to see this. I want to see what happened. You leave one verse for him to kill 600 Philistines. And you know the rest of the verse. This is, this is to me the, the, the catalyst. I love this. In verse 31. And he also delivered Israel. I mean, the dude goes out, kills 600 Philistines. Oh, and by the way, he delivered Israel too. That is so powerful. Now the circumstances could have been better for him, I'm sure. And the circumstances can be better for you, I'm sure, but you only have to work with what's in front of you. So be responsible and work hard and be resourceful. Be resourceful. And if God gives you an ox code, use it. If he gives you an ability, a talent, a gift, use it. For his glory. And you'll win. You will win if you stay faithful to that. Stay faithful in your, listen to this, faithful in your fight, or focus, and frequent in your fight. You have to do that. And you will win. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not. You're going to win. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. Be responsible and be resourceful, just like Shamgar, and you'll knock him dead. Friends, if you're here today, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you don't know where you're going when you die, wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you like to know for sure that when I die, I'm going to heaven? Well, there's a lot of questions that I had when I was a kid. That was one of them. Where would I go when I die? I want this hand right here to represent you and me, and I want this wallet to represent all of our sin. The Bible says God loves us, but hates our sin. To go to heaven, you have to be sinless. The sin has to be paid for. 
The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is not church membership. It's not water baptism. It's not working hard. Isn't that interesting? It's the only thing that you don't work for is your salvation. It's to him that worketh not, but believeth on him. You see this right here? The wages of sin is death. Someone has to die. If you die with this sin, you'll spend an eternity separated from God. 2,000 years ago, Jesus knew that the wages of sin was death, so he came to die for your sin. Salvation is that simple. The transaction is easy. When you, in the quietness of your mind, trust that Jesus died for your sin, you go to heaven. It's trusting in the work he did, absent from your work. Now that is a miracle. We don't have to work for it. Matter of fact, we're condemned if we try to work for it. It's because our faith alone and Christ alone is what saves us. And if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, trust Him that He died for you. That He made the payment that you couldn't make. You couldn't make it. And you would have never gotten what He got for you, and that's heaven. Will you trust Him today as your Savior? And then, and then, and then, as a disciple, after you're saved, after you've trusted Christ, later, later, you work as hard as you can for the Lord. Work as hard as you can for the Lord, as unto the Lord. Not to earn your salvation, not to keep your salvation, but because you're thankful for your salvation. Isn't that wonderful? Work as hard as you can after you're saved, not to get saved. I'm so thankful that Jesus died for me. And if you haven't trusted Him, I pray that you would today.